Hello everyone. So in this video, we will be dis discussing your acid-base titration lab. So not only will you learn about how acid-base titrations are performed, but you will also perform one yourself. And the whole purpose of that is to determine an unknown acid concentration. So titrations, they're a technique. It's not special or it's not... Um, like locked into just acids and bases. A titration can be between anything um, of a solution of a known concentration and a solution of a unknown concentration usually. So it's just a controlled reaction. You'll always know one of the concentrations and you will not know the other one. So you'll always have a known and an unknown. So your known is called the titrant, your unknown is called the analyte. So in this case, it just happens to be an acid-based titration. There's other types as well. So for us, the titrant is your NaOH and the analyte is HCl. So these are both um, strong. Uh, you have a strong base right here, your NaOH, and you have a strong acid. And this always forms, um, any strong acid, any strong base always forms a salt or an ionic um, soluble compound and a water molecule. So um, for this acid-based titration, you'll be using a burette. It is a special type of glassware that has very uh, precise markings of volume. And you will typically have your known concentration there. And for us here, this is our base, so our NaOH. It has a special delivery system. <laughs> that sounds kind of funny, like UPS or something. It just has a little knob that you can turn here. It's called stopcock. Um, and that knob helps control you, you know, adding the volume. You can stop it real quick or you can open it. And the whole point of that is because you don't know at what point you need to stop until you are reaching something called the equivalence point. So at the equivalence point, you have uh, completely reacted the NaOH and the HCl. Um, it's all consumed with each other. And this is what the equivalence point is. Now for us, we have something called an indicator that indicator, we add it and it turns this solution pink whenever this equivalence point is reached. If you didn't have that indicator, it wouldn't, it would just be colorless. So you wouldn't know you would keep probably adding NaOH. So in the lab that often happens, um, like if you ever do one of these titrations in person, you will find that at least someone in the lab one of the groups or pairs, uh, they'll forget to put the indicator and then they're sitting there adding and adding and adding <laughs> sodium hydroxide and they're like, uh, why isn't it turning pink? Well, because you forgot the phenolphthalein or the indicator, whatever indicator it is. So it's kind of a funny situation, but either way, uh, the indicator demonstrates your equivalence point and that is a color change. So. Um, and here it describes the phenolphthalein, so I'll let you explore that a little bit more. But this is a really nice um, distinction. This picture shows you the distinction between whenever you have an acidic solution versus a basic solution versus the equivalence point. So phenolphthalein, it's colorless in acidic solution. It's very magenta pink in very basic solution and then it's this kind of beautiful I think it's beautiful pale pale pink at the equivalence point so this is exactly whenever the mole of NaOH equals the moles of HCl so that's the perfect ratio basically so essentially this is what you're doing this is what you're going to witness in the virtual lab. So 
I'm going to go ahead and do a half split screen. Okay, so now you should be seeing a split screen between the lab procedure and then here I have loaded the Chem Collective lab. So you're going to click here. I, I'm not going to click it again, but you're going to click it. This is how the Chem Collective lab should look, of course, as always. There, I zoomed out a little bit. So there are three major portions to this lab. I always try to kind of split up the procedure into, I guess, the themes. So first uh, major task you are completing is you're going to make a dilution of NaOH. So the, Na, the NaOH that you are given here in the virtual lab is 10 molar. That is very strong, like really strong. So what you do, need to do is make a dilution of it. And that is what we are going to term or name our working stock because that's what we're working with. This right here is the stock solution versus NaOH, the dilution that we make, is our working solution. So you can call it working solution, working stock, whatever it is that you want to call it. Uh, that's just a common term in lab that you use. So you're going to make that first. And here I describe to you how you do that. I tell you all the volumes and everything. It's just a matter of you doing it. Um, I'm trying to think of any tips I have regarding the glassware or anything. I mean, pretty much um, you have worked with glass, the glassware here on Chem Collective. So just keep doing what you're doing as always, whenever you need to pour from one thing to another or transfer, you know, liquid or powder, anything from one piece of glassware to another, you are holding it over and then you are um, going to just add in however much you need to add. All right, so uh, you're making that dilution first, then you're going to set up for titration. So you are going to bring your unknown acid to the workbench. It's right here, right? Everything's labeled pretty much the same way I describe it. So hopefully there's no confusion there, but you are going to do a few trials. And for each of the trials, you are going to start off with 20 ml of your unknown acid. Okay, that's important for later. Um, don't forget to add your phenolphthalein, it's right here, your indicator. <laughs> that will happen to you, what I was describing earlier, um, what can happen to people in the lab. This will also happen here. It will not change color if you don't add phenolphthalein. Um, and then you are going to bring a burette to the workbench as well. So I think the burette, yeah, it's in other because it's a, you know, it doesn't fall in one of these categories, but you're going to bring that here as well and I'll let you have fun with that um, and you are going to add 50 ml of your working stock um, to that burette. Now something I um, kind of glossed over, I was talking about the working stock. You should rename your volumetric flask that contains that working stock, you should rename it that way. So um, you do that by right clicking, rename, just so that you know, you know what's, what is what it's just easier, right? Like in the lab, you would name, you would label everything with either a piece of tape or um, with the special pencil that you can use on glassware, but we're doing the same thing here. Okay, so now you've made your dilution, your working stock, and you set up for titration. Now you're gonna actually complete the titration. So you're gonna begin by titrating um, one ml in one ml increments. So what do we, mean by titrating. You're just adding in that amount to your acid. Okay, so I'm going to pause here for a bit and kind of get it semi set up to show you this. All right, so I got it semi set up, right? I didn't actually do trial one, trial two. I just did trial one. Um, but as always, label everything, <laughs> have it clearly labeled out because everything can start to look alike see so 
um, let's pretend I made my working stock, right? Because mine is actually not made. Um, but let's pretend I made it, and then you're going to transfer it to your burette. All right, so we're pretending that I filled this burette all the way to 50 ml and that it actually contains the correct thing. It does not. I'm letting you uh, do that on your own, but um, just to show you what this will look like, you're going to bring your burette on top of your trial and then you're going to add in a little bit at a time. That's what we mean by titrate in. So um, start with the 1 ml increments. Oh Lord, these notifications. Uh, the 1 ml increments, then 0.5, and then slowly, slower and slower, okay? And um, I used to have a different video where I showed this more in detail, but there's not really much to it, you know, just enter the volume here. 1 ml, 0.5, and then 0.25. You can also do the realistic version of this where you like click it and do 1 ml and then click it and then but it, it's kind of difficult it can it can kind of backfire <laughs> in some ways but anyway you know you're gonna do this once your solution turns pink stop your titration and you're gonna repeat this for a total of three trials and um, obviously collect the data in your table one um, from here is a bunch of calculations okay so that pretty much right here on A, you know, once you complete your three trials, that ends the actual lab stuff. From there, it's a bunch of calculations. So let's go ahead and talk about that. So uh, we are going to calculate the concentration first of our working stock. You made it, but you don't actually know the concentration. So we need to sit back. We need to kind of come back and figure that out first. From there, we will be able to do our stoichiometry to determine the concentration of our unknown um, acid or our unknown concentration of our acid is what I meant. So here's the first part. You are determining the concentration of your working stock that you made by using M1 V1 equals M2 V2. So this is your dilution equation. If you need to go revisit you um, some old lecture videos that you watched or you can also just search on YouTube um, if you like other types of videos like if you like Khan Academy videos um, dilution equation dilution calculations those will be good examples of this but essentially you have everything here one of these M's you're gonna label these M's these molarities as M1 and M2, M2, I'm not telling you which one is which, but because I want you to figure that out, I think that's important. Um, but one of those is M1, one of those is M2, and then here you also have your two volumes, right? You have a ML here, ML here, so V1, V2, right? I'm not saying which one is which, but you have everything there. It's just a matter of going back to your procedure and kind of understanding, okay, I started with this volume and then I added, you know, this much solvent, this much water. So it totaled X, Y, Z, right? Or one, two, three, <laughs> whatever it is that you calculate. So take care of that first. And then um, here is where you actually collected your trial data. So your initial burette reading versus your final. Remember that for the burette readings, it always starts off high at like 50, and then your final is usually lower. So you just subtract the two in order to get the volume. Okay. Um, and once we get to the applied exercises, I'm actually I'm gonna elaborate a little bit more on that. Okay. And then you describe the molarity or you note the molarity of NaOH used. I'm going to give you a giant hint and tell you that the working stock molarity is this right here. So whatever you happen to calculate here is what you will plug in in this row. I'm trying to highlight the entire thing. It's not working. 
But anyway, um, yeah, this right here is what will go, oops, <laughs> that's horrible, in this row, okay? And then you'll just describe the color of the equivalent point. Now, like I said, from there, it's a bunch of calculations. Um, and here, I kind of give like a really short version of how to calculate that. I do have a lecture video that goes through this type of calculation step by step. I am including that on the pre-lab videos. So please, please watch that video. Um, I don't want to just regurgitate over and over. So I'm going to refer you to that video in the pre-lab video section um, on D2, D2L for this lab. Uh, so please visit that and that will help you like step by step on how to complete this. But basically it's stoichiometry. Uh, and then I also want you to confirm the molarity that you calculated on um, the virtual lab. So here it asks you, it asks you, what is the concentration of the acid? So don't exit out before you calculate everything. Um, leave the screen there for what you just completed and average out the molarities of the three trials and then make it be three sig figs and then enter it here and check it, okay? So I wanna see that you did that. And if you need to start over, that's fine. You know, don't ever worry about like starting over, you can just refresh it. But um, do not refresh between trials, okay? Use the same page. Okay, so there, that is your data collection and procedure. Now, applied exercises, if uh, you find yourself, you try to do the procedure and you try to collect the data and you're like, I really don't know what I'm doing. I would recommend starting off with the applied exercises. If you feel strong about what you're doing and you're like, okay, this is good. Then, you know, proceed as you usually do, do the procedure, do the data collection and then applied exercises. But if, if you want to, honestly, you could start with the applied exercises part. Uh, I think it's nice because it actually shows you um, a titration. A, I think it's a teacher, professor. Um, they are showing you how to complete a titration in lab. So uh, you're gonna answer all these questions in complete sentences, but basically you're describing, you know, what's going on in the lab. So the fact that you saw this happen, I think will be helpful for you actually completing it in the procedure and data collection. So this is important, or this is the part I wanted to touch on regarding the burette. So for burette, the volume that you disperse, that you delivered from it, is always the final volume minus the initial volume. So I wanted to just point that out. So yeah, just answer all of this in complete sentences. Show calculations whenever you need to. Um, like I said, I'm gonna post a, or I'm gonna include the lecture video that highlights step by step how to do these calculations. Okay, so that'll be included there. If you have any questions, as always, just let me know.